family, I trust to find you well today. And thank you for joining us on our Celebration Pulse this evening. As we continue on our conversations on becoming who God has called us to, today I want to begin to pick up from where we left off last week when we began to talk about I got a thorn in my flesh. And previously, before that, we spoke about the seasons of life. And today I want to go on a conversation that's in the same line of thought um, to what we began, you know, last week and the week before and try to see if we can bring a combination of the two. Then hopefully next week we can bring this uh, conversation or series to a slam dunk. Now, I believe that God is doing so much things in our lives. I believe that we are in a season that whilst we are progressing, it is a season that is filled with so much uncertainty. In fact, over the last week that has just gone by, South Africa went through a bit of a challenging patch. But I believe that, you know, in every journey that we walk, there are going to be challenges. There are going to be issues that we're going to face as a society and as a people. But I believe that love conquers all. And it is the love of God that will conquer all. So I just want to reach out and stretch out to all family and friends that could have been affected in one way or another, just to say, look, let the peace of God reign and let the love of God take precedence above everything that we do as children of God and as believers. And I want to encourage you that let's take time in our communities to encourage one another, to exalt one another, and to build one another, more importantly, on the word of God. And also, uh, in the last week, we have had... Um, you know, a lot of challenges. We have lost some very dear friends to COVID, to the pandemic, and some right now are struggling and are battling to recover from the pandemic. And I just want to take a moment just to pray and believe God for all those friends and family that could be struggling or uh, those that could be in a season of mourning to say, look, may the peace of God that passeth all understanding be with you to lead you to guide you and to establish you i just want to declare that may god's comfort and power embrace you like never before and let god himself show himself strong to you in this time and this season we are not those that are weak but we are those that are strengthened by god and by his word so be encouraged my friends and family even as we start um, on this series and on this conversation today now, today for our conversation, I want us to quickly dash on to the book of uh, First Kings, and I'll read from uh, chapter 17. And this is where we are going to pretty much spend much of our time uh, this evening. And I hope I won't keep you for too long, but just quickly wanted to jump onto this, and I trust that you are going to find it uh, such a blessing uh, today. So I'll read from the New King James Version, and uh, the subject is Elijah Proclaims a Doubt. Now, the Bible reads, and Elijah, uh, the Tishbite of the inhabitant of Gilead, said to Ab, as the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall not be Jew nor reign these years except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to him, Elijah saying, get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the book Kerith, which flows into Jordan, and it will be that you shall drink from the brook, and I have commanded ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and stayed by the brook Kerith, which flows into Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. Now, verse 7 says, And it happened after a while that the brook dried up because there was no rain in the land. Verse 7 says, And it happened after a while that the brook dried up because there was no rain in the land. Now, as a subject tonight, I want to use when the brook dries up. You know, as we were reading this particular portion of scripture, this is, uh, when we realize or when Elijah, uh, the prophet, is uh, sort of introduced um, at the time when um, the children of Israel were being troubled by a, by, uh, a king, Ahab, 
at that particular point in time. And in fact, Ahab, as some of you would remember, uh, was married to uh, the Queen Jezebel, who was influencing um, a, an evil agenda um, on the people of God, but using her husband Ahab to push an agenda. And, and typically, Ahab would take every opportunity to instill evil and to push the agenda of the evil on the people of God. And of course, was being largely influenced by Jezebel. Now, we could go on um, into you know, what was happening at that time. But what was quite exciting is God uh, raises a prophet and a man of God, Elijah, uh, the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead, actually just, you know, appeared onto the scene and made a declaration to the king that there will not be rain or water, uh, or there will, not be, there will not be dew nor rain for a particular season because of the evil, except at my word. What a declaration. We see the prophet of God coming to the scene. And immediately once Elijah does that and he comes to the scene and he makes that declaration, he became an enemy of the state. You know, there are times <laughs> that you are going to say certain things or you are going to declare certain things, which might be true. But because you have spoken prophetically, they are probably going to make you an enemy to the people around you. Now we find this is the exact situation that Elijah finds himself in. And God immediately declares and says, because of the declaration that you have made, I am taking you to a place of hiding. And he called that the brook Kerith. Now, the word Kerith in the, uh, in the Greek or in the Hebrew actually means a set apart or a cut out place, a place of loneliness. And that's exactly where Elijah went to. And the Bible says, uh, or God says to him, get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the brook Kerith, which flows into Jordan. Now, the brook Kerith is where God asks him to hide. And he says, in that brook, I'm going to provide for you. Firstly, you are going to be fed by ravens. Ravens are going to feed you. Now, for some of you, as you know, ravens were one of the first, actually, it was, was the first bed that came out um, of, the, of the Ark of Noah. Then secondly, you know, the dove, which of course represented the Holy Spirit. And he says, you are going to be fed by ravens when you are right in that brook. And in addition to be fed by rabbins that are going to bring you, uh, 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 of course, bread and meat in the morning, bread and meat in the evening, you are also going to drink water from the brook. So the man of God had all his provision. I mean, his pantry was full. And he was being fed by, by rabbins um, in the morning and in the evening. And I would assume that he was getting the freshness of day. And he was in a brook in a time and in a season of drought. I'd assume most of the brooks and areas and sources of water would have dried up. But Elijah was in a privileged position where he was getting everything that he needed because God was providing for him. But we then read further in verse number 7 and it says, And it happened to come at a time that the brook dries up. The place of provision, the place where Elijah was getting his provision, the place where he, he, was, he was getting all that he needed. The Bible tells us that the brook had dried up. You know, the brook for you and me could be our place of provision, could be our place of, of sustenance. That there are times in life that as we grow to become who God has called us to, that the brook is going to dry up. That there are times that God is going to dry up that a place where we have, which we have considered to be our place of provision. That place at one time is going to dry up. And today I want to just give you a few points as it relates to what happens or what a child of God or what it means when the brook dries up. But to start with, let's begin to analyze and say what happens at times in life if the brook does not dry up? What happens in life if we live without the brook drying up? You know, there are times that we as children of God, that we tend to sit at a certain place or in one place of provision and we are stuck and we don't move from there because it is our place where we are familiar. It is our place of familiarity. We don't move from there. And I believe that without the brook drying up, Elijah would have not moved would have stayed in that brook, would have stayed in that place because he was comfortable, it was a place of provision. So point number one is, without the brook drying up, you would not move. You would be stagnant. Stagnation will creep in if the brook doesn't dry up. What point am I trying to make? The point I'm trying to make is, at times, at some point in life or in your journey of becoming who God has called you to, 
The brook or your place of sustenance and your place of provision is going to dry up. Your place of provision is going to dry up. But do not mistake your place of drying up as denial or God for, uh, or God for uh, throwing you out or, as, uh, or God bringing you into a place of punishment. No, it's not that. You know, I believe that our God is a, is a progressive God. In fact, if you read verse 9 of the same chapter, God says to Elijah, when the brook had dried up, he says, arise and go. You know, I believe that our God is a God who is progressive. He is a God who is always on the move. And God is always seeking for you and me not to be stagnant, not to be comfortable in one place, but to be always progressive, to be people who are moving from one level of glory to another. And I believe that God used the situation of drying the brook to announce the new season that Elijah was getting into. You know, at times as children of God, we mistaken as a, a place of provision which could have dried. It could be a job that could have been lost. It could have been a business that could be breaking down. It could be us being in a time of a pandemic and we think that the brook has dried up. We think that it is the end of life. But I am here to encourage you today to say your brook could have dried up. Your place of sustenance, your place of provision could have dried up. But it does not mean an end to life, but simply an end to a season and signaling the starting of a new season in your life. Because in your journey of becoming, you are going to move from one cycle of season to another. And you need to understand that seasons will come to an end. And when the brook dries up, it is only God who is, who is declaring that the season is over for this place of provision. And it is time for you to move to another place of provision. You see, because God's idea will be to remove you from your place of comfort. You know, I believe that God is always taking us into places of discomfort. Why? Because places of discomfort are places of growth. These are places that God brings growth. The only way that God can bring growth at times to the children of God is if he dries up the brook. Try to imagine that there are times in your life that new things have happened simply because your place of previous provision or your place of previous manna had dried up. You know, the Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, verse 18, but, but we all, with unveiled faces, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, we are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of, of the Lord. We are transformed from glory to glory. Listen, glory to glory is not the same place. It is one measure of glory to another measure of glory. That is what our God is about. Our God is about progression. He is a progressive God. And I believe that if you are a child of God, and you have been a, a child of God for years, and your life doesn't change, and your life doesn't progress, then there is, there is a problem with the God that you are believing in. Because I believe that if you are a believer, if you are a child of God, we should see even in the natural, the progression that God is making in your life. There should be a change. There should be a transformation. Hallelujah. We move from one level of glory to another. You know, the Bible says in the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, verse 22 to 24, that God's royal love couldn't have run out. His mercies, his merciful love couldn't have dried up. They are created new every morning. Listen, that his mercies are new every morning. It, I'm reading this from the Message Bible. It says that his merciful love couldn't have dried up. The provision, the place of provision could dry up, but the provider, the source doesn't dry up. So it says his mercies are new every morning. How great is your faithfulness? I am sticking with God. I will say it over and over again. He is all that I have God left. I want to encourage you today. That at times without the brook drying up, you are going to remain in the same place. You are going to be comfortable with the status quo. But that's not what God is calling us to. God is calling us to move to another level of glory. When the brook dries up, remember as a child of God, it is an opportunity for you to move because God is a progressive God. He is always on the move. Number two, without the brook dry, drying up, you would cease to live 
but only exist. Get this right. You would cease to live, but only exist. What the, what the brook does is it creates comfort levels. You know, I remember when Dr. McConey came to Johannesburg, one of the things that he said um, and one of his key anthems was to say, uh, I am praying and believing God that for everybody who is in a rented house, that you get some discomfort for being in a rented house. Because he made a declaration that God is going to move people into places of owning properties. And we have seen what the Lord has done. We have seen what the Lord has done. That was a, a declaration that let that place that you are comfortable with, let it dry up for God to progressive you into your own. For God to progress you into your own. And I believe this is the same with us, that at times when you are in a brook scenario and the brook is flowing and ravens are feeding you, you become comfortable and you start existing instead of living. Now, Oscar Wilde makes this um, exclamation. He says, to live is the rarest thing in the world. Most people exist. That is all. To live is rare. Many people exist. That is all. You see, most people would wonder whether there is a difference between to live and to exist. Now, let me walk you through this. Although both of these are verbs, live and exist mean to remain alive, we often use them in different contexts. Now, existing refers to remain alive, to survive, to continue to, uh, to be in simple terms, it can be described as doing what is necessary to stay alive. Now, some of us, we do what is necessary to stay alive. And that is the, um, uh, uh, the, the, the most dangerous thing about being um, at the brook. Because the brook is a place where you are captured. And you only exist. You choose to survive. Because you are in a status quo. But as a child of God, when you choose to live, when we compare living and existing, living means to enjoy your life. Living is, 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 is active. It is not passive. It is spontaneous. But existing is passive and is mechanical. You see, living life is waking up every morning with purpose, not rolling out of bed because you have to. And when you know that you, the thing that provided for you today might not provide for you tomorrow, what it means is you are always excited about life. You are always chasing the dream. You see, because the living is, life is, is embracing change and chasing growth, not buckling to fear and avoiding change. You see, and that is the danger with being with living a brook-centered life. A brook-centered life looks at, do I have enough for tomorrow? Do, 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 do I have enough just to exist? But oh, friends and family, you need to understand that he says that I have come, that you might have life and have it more abundantly. In fact, I, I love to read this from the Passion Translation, John 10, 10 from the Passion Translation. It says, the thief has come only with one thing in mind. He wants to steal, to slaughter, and to destroy. But I have come to give you everything in abundance. More than you can expect. Life in its fullness until it overflows. Listen, at times, without the brook drying up, we will stop living life and we will start existing. But God wants you to live life. He wants you to have life in more abundance. And at times, he does that by ending the seasons of the brooks. By ending the seasons of being fed by ravens and ushering you into new seasons. And as a child of God, it is your responsibility that in your journey of becoming, you need to embrace the various seasons in your life. And we spoke about this when we spoke about the seasons of life. That embrace the cold, embrace the, the summer season, embrace every season in your life because every season brings newness. Living life is embracing every moment as it comes. 
not merely breathing and doing the daily chores. God does not want us to maintain the status quo. He is about growth and progression. Hallelujah. When the brook dries up, when the brook dries up, for some of you, you don't want the brook to dry up, but let me tell you, without the brook drying up, you are going to be stagnant. You are not going to start moving. You are going to cease to live and you are going to just start to exist. Without the brook drying up, you would not grow. You see, because living in status quo land, living in comfort zone, hampers growth. You see, Roy Bernard says a few things and I'll throw out a few quotes. He says, it's only after you have stepped outside your comfort zone that you begin to change, to grow, and to transform. It's only after you have stepped out of the brook season, that comfort zone, that's when you start to change, to grow, and to transform. Are you looking to grow? Are you looking to change? Are you looking to transform? Step out of your comfort zone. What is your comfort zone? What is that place that you call your brook? What is that place that you call your brook carry? Where you, where you stay and you believe you are fed by ravens. For some of you young people, it could be your mother's house. Maybe it's about time you start moving out and give yourself, you give life a new challenge. For some of you, it could be the same routine that you have been over and over again. For some of you, you could have been on the same job for a very long time. For some of you, you could be in the same sector or industry where you have stuck yourself in for a very long time. And listen, I'm not taking away the need to be a specialist. Yes, there are times where you have to stay in one place and you need to use wisdom. But for some of you, you know very well that it is time to usher in and look for new horizons. You see, because if you stay in your comfort zone, it hampers growth. In fact, John F. Kennedy says, conformity is the jailer of freedom and the enemy of growth. Conformity, being conformed or confined to one place is the jailer of freedom and is the enemy of growth. You want to grow? Break out. Of conformity. Don't be a conformist, but move out from the attitude of being confined or conformed to one place. If you do not grow, you become limited. You become limited. You don't have exposure. You don't have the ability to see the newness of what life brings. At times, we want to remain in familiar places. That is the danger. As children of God, we, we are happy with the familiar. We are happy with the routine. Break out of the routine because growth comes when you break out of routine. Yes, routine is good to bring discipline. But there are certain types of routine that is bad. You need to learn to break out of it. Do new things. Get into the newness of life. Because it is in the newness of life, it is in, in exploring the newness of life that you, you walk into new horizons. As you become what God has called you to. You can't become staying in one place. But when the brook dries up, ooh, it gives you a challenge to move into new horizons, into new places. Listen, the brook might have dried up. The brook might have dried up. But you need to understand that the brook is just a conduit of God's provision and not a source. You see, this is the danger. Why for some of us we don't grow and find new avenues and find new things. Why? Because we have started to focus on the brook as our provision and not realizing that um, as our source and not realizing that it is just a conduit. And like if Elijah had mistaken the brook to be the source, then when he had dried, when it had dried up, he would have died at that point. But Elijah in his mind had the understanding, he knew that the, the brook was just, was, just, was just a conduit that God was using. But he was the source of the provision. It was just a conduit of provision, but it was not the source itself. 
The source was God. And as a child of God, you need to understand in your life, you need to recognize that the source is God. Your job is not the source. It is just a conduit that God is using as a, as, as a, as a place of provision. He is the source. Your business is not the source, but God is the source. Hallelujah. You know, I love what the, what the Bible says. It says, behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Listen, it says, I'm about to do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness. Listen, he says, I will make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. A road in the wilderness. A road representing new horizons, new possibilities. You see, for you to go to, to new possibilities, you, you need to travel roads. When you travel roads, you, you go into new horizons. You go into, into new possibilities. You explore. You see new things. And he says that I will make rivers in the desert. Now rivers are sources of supply. And what God is saying to you and me today is when the brook dries up, it is me who is just trying to communicate to you that get ready. I am about to do a new thing. I'm about to create new supplies, new, new places of provision, new places of resources. Why? Because when the, when the, if the brook doesn't dry up, it does not give me the opportunity to create new horizons and new seasons for your life. Hallelujah. When the brook dries up, it is not punishment. Hallelujah. It is a setup. When the brook dries up, it is not punishment. It is a setup. A setup for new exploits and new opportunities for you, child of God. Hallelujah. So we have spoken about without the brook drying up, you would be stagnant. You would cease to live and exist. You would, you would cease to live and just exist. And you would stop growing. But now I want to go into my subject matter and begin to speak and say, what happens? When the brook dries up. What happens when the brook dries up? You know, if we read the Bible in the book of First Kings as well, we read about Elijah. And in fact, in verse number eight, after the brook had dried up, he says, Then the word of the Lord came to him and said, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there, and live there. See, I have commanded the widow to provide for you. Listen very carefully. So he arose and went to Zarephath, the Bible says. And when he came to the gate of the city, and indeed a widow was there gathering sticks, and he called to her and said, Please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called to her and said again, Please bring me a morsel of bread for me to eat. So she said, As the Lord your God lives. I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I'm gathering sticks that I may go and prepare it for myself and my son so that we can eat and we die. And Elijah said to you, do not be afraid. Go and do as I have said, but make me a small cake from it first and bring it to me. And afterward, make some for yourself in the sun. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the bean of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on earth. So she went and away and did according to what the men of God had said. And she and their household ate for many days. The bean of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run out, according to the word of that the Lord has spoken to Elijah. Now, number one, what happens when the brook dries up? I believe that when the brook dries up, your networks and relationships are expanded. You know, Elijah was in a lonely place, in that cut out place, right in the brook. But when the brook dried up, it gave me an opportunity to enter into new relationships and into new networks. You know, for some of you, you are probably looking at yourself and you're and saying your business could be struggling right now. And that's probably a dried up brook. Your, your relationship or your marriage could be struggling right now. That could be maybe a dried up brook. But I believe that when the brook dries up, it gives you an opportunity to enter into new relationships that will bring certain new values into your life. 
And for some of you, it is an opportunity for you to go out there and begin to look for new relationships, begin to make new networks, because the season that you are getting into next is a unique season. Elijah was being introduced to new people and new relationships. And I believe that as you are entering into the new season, where the brook is dried up, you are getting into your Zarapat moment, and in Zarapat, your Zarapat moment is going to bring new relationships, different connections, and relationships that are relevant to your season. Do not be stuck into old relationships that God is trying to get you out of. Because the season that he is about to get you into is a season that is going to require new relationships and networks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some people you might not like in the previous season are probably going to be people that are going to be your great networks and relationships in the season that you are getting into. And as a child of God, it is very important and very critical for you to understand this piece that God is ushering us into new seasons and into new relationships. And those new relationships are going to be our anchors in the next season that he's taking us into. So do not be stuck. Do not be beholden to the relationships that you had back then. I mean, think about it for some of you. You can even struggle to relate to some people that you were in primary or in high school. Why? Because that season is over. Because when you meet them, maybe all you are going to be discussing is about, oh, that girl or that boy or that, or whatever. I mean, you are no longer part of that of those relationships because God has ushered you into a new season, into a new horizon where you have to be probably talking to kings and princes. You have been ushered into new relationships. So when the brook dries up, don't look at it as a, as a, as a, as, a, as a punishment. Don't don't look at it as a bad thing. But what the brook will bring a new relationships. Elijah was brought into a new relation. He had relationship with ravens. <laughs> When he was in the brook carried, his relationship was, was, was with the ravens. But God was beginning to usher him out of the raven relationship. And he was bringing him into a relationship now with the widow. And the widow was now going to be his next place, the next stop of provision. There are relationships that God is going to begin to dry up. He is going to bring to an end because the, the, their usefulness to you in that season has come to an end. And as a child of God, be prepared to embrace that. Hallelujah. God is ushering you into new relationships, new networks, bringing new people into your life. Embrace it. Get ready for it. Get ready, get ready for it. Hallelujah. Relationships that will anchor you. Networks that will anchor you. Get ready. Because when the brook dries up, it is a signal for the new relationships that God is bringing you into. You see, when the brook dries up, your trust is built. Number two. When the brook dries up, your trust is built. You know, in verse 15 we read, so it says, so the lady or the widow went away and did according to the word of Elijah. And she and their household ate for many days. The bean of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord which he spoke to Elijah. Hallelujah. Which he spoke to Elijah. It did not dry up. Number one. I've already said, when the brook dries up, your networks and your relationships will expand. But when the brook dries up, your trust is built and is strengthened. You know, I believe that for the people of God, the Bible says that some trust in horses and some trust in chariots, but we will remember the name of the Lord. We are not going to be focusing on the gift, but we are going to focus on the giver. So that even when the gift goes, when the gift of the brook dries up, we will still have this confidence that we have the giver connected to us. And I believe that as the children of God, we should always have this understanding that our provision is in God. 
I want to encourage you that even in this dry and in this tough seasons that we are in, which are almost like a, a replica of a crisis, our provision for our security, our provision for, for, for food and health is in God, it is anchored in God. We should not be in fear, but we should know that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Our God will supply all our needs. It's not only when the brook dries that we build our trust in, in, in our abilities. No, even when the brook dries up, our ability, our trust is built in God. Because we have known what this God has done. He is the same God that fed us with ravens. And he will do it again. He will do it again. Let's trust God. Let's trust God. You know, the Bible says in the book of Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 7 to 8, that blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Whose trust is in the Lord. He will be like a tree that is planted by the water. That sends out its roots by the stream. And does not fear when heat comes. For, it leave, for its leaves will remain green. And is not anxious in the year of drought. In the year when, when, when the brook dries up. For it does not cease to bear fruit. Like Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Who do you trust in? Do you trust in your family? Do you trust in your wife? Do you trust in your circle of friends? When that brook dries up, what happens? I'm here to encourage you that in your journey of becoming, anchor your trust in God. Anchor your trust in Jehovah, the undefeated champion. The one who is unmoved, Jehovah Elohim. Jehovah El Shaddai. You have to anchor your trust in him. Who do you trust in when the brook dries up? Listen, when the brook dries up, it is our place where our trust is built. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As I go to my last point this evening, when the brook dries up, your faith for the miraculous grows. Uh, hallelujah. When the brook dries up, your faith for the miraculous grows. You know, we read further in chapter 17 of uh, the book of Kings that Elijah, now living in this widow's house, he was in a pressure point. The brook had dried up. Goes into the widow's house and there was now full of provision in the widow's house. And we then read in verse number 17 that now it happened after these things that the son of the woman who owned the house became sick and the sickness was so serious that there was no breath in him. So she said to Elijah, what have I to do with you? What have I to do with you, O man of God? Have you come to bring me to bring my sin to remembrance and to kill my son. And he said to her, give me your son. And the Bible records that. So he took out his arms and carried him into the upper room where he was staying and laid him on his bed. Then he cried out unto the Lord and said, oh Lord, my God, you have also brought tragedy on the widow with whom I lodged by killing her son. And he stretched out himself out of the child three times. And cried out to the Lord and said, Oh Lord, my God, I pray, let this child's soul come back. Then the Lord heard the voice of Elijah. And the soul of the child came back to him and he was revived. Listen. Elijah, the brook had dried up, comes into the widow's house. And the son of the widow dies. And the widow starts saying, I mean, man of God, is, is, it, is it because you have come to bring the remembrance of my sin so that my child can die? He's in a tight place. I'm sure at that moment, Elijah could, could have probably been, if he was as human as I am, he probably could have been thinking, of course he was, but he, he, I could have been starting to think, say, God, why did you take me away from a place where the ravens were feeding me? Why did you take me up, away from the place where, where I had everything? I, had, I, I mean, I was having meat and bread in the morning. I was having meat and bread in the evening, and there was cool flowing water from a brook. 
And now you bring me into this widow's house and you bring death upon her life. Why has this happened? But remember, when the brook dries up, your faith for the miraculous grows. And I believe that Elijah had seen what the Lord had done. He had seen the works of Jehovah. There was nothing that would unfaze him anymore. He believed that he, he could bring the dead to life. He could bring the dead to be resurrected. And I believe that like um, what uh, uh, Smith Wigglesworth says, he says, great faith is a product of great fights. Great testimonies are the outcomes of great tests. And great triumphs can only come out of great trials. You know, I believe that the brook drying up was a great trial for Elijah. And I believe that even that son dying was a great trial for the man of God. But like Smith Wigglesworth says that great faith is a product of great fights. Great testimonies are an outcome of great tests. Listen, child of God, that your brook could have dried up, but I'm here to encourage you today that let it not be a place of shame. Let it not be a place of death, but let it be a place where the miraculous is built. Let it be a place where those things that could have been dying in your life are resurrected. Things that could have seemed dead in the last season, but when you come out of the season when the brook has dried up let God arise let God arise in your life let those things that were dying let those dreams, those hopes that were dying in your life that whilst the brook could have dried up but when the brook dries up it gives me the courage, it gives me the ability, it gives me the strength to rise and say this place of great triumph is going to be a place where great miracles are going to be built Great trials can only come out of great trials. Child of God, do not look at the trials and the challenges that they are going through in life as a place of dread. No, they are not a place of death. They are a place where tri triumphs are built. Smith Wigglesworth even says further, there is nothing impossible with God. All the impossibility is with us when we measure God by the limitations of our unbelief. You know, Elijah did not measure God by the limitations of his unbelief. He allowed God of all possibilities to do what he can do. Let me tell you, child of God, don't let your unbelief hinder you or humble you to your place of becoming. God has called you to a place to become who he has called you to. Do not allow a dried brook. Do not allow a dried brook of, of, of a job lost or of a business that is, that is struggling to stop you from believing God for the miraculous. Let me tell you that God is still in the business of doing the miraculous. He will do it again. He has done it before and he will do it again. Elijah was fed with ravens. Elijah was fed from a brook. And when the brook dried up, he did not give up because he knew that the Lord who had provided for him before would do it again. Let me tell you today and let me tell you right now that our God is still in the business of doing miracles and he will do it again. In your journey of becoming, you need to understand that our God will do miracles and don't let your unbelief stop him. Hallelujah. Those things will rise again. Those things will live again. He will live again. Lastly, another quote from Smith with Wigglesworth. He says, there is nothing that our God cannot do. He will do everything if you will dare to believe. Let me say this in closing. That in our journey of becoming we have to dare heaven. We have to dare God. Let's put a demand on the kingdom. Let's put a demand on the kingdom. What are you believing God for in your journey of becoming who he has called you to? What are you believing God for? What are you, what are you, what, what, what are sort of the results that you want to see in your life? What are those hopes and those dreams that you have in this journey of becoming? Let God arise in your life and let every man be a liar. Let God arise. Let him arise. Let him arise. Let him show himself strong in your life. He is great and mighty. He is Jehovah. Let him show himself strong and mighty in your life. Saints, I want to believe this with you. And I want to declare today that when the brook dries up, it is, a, it is an opportunity for, for, for your faith to rise, for your faith for the miraculous to rise. 
God is still in the business of doing miracles. Hallelujah. Be encouraged today. Because without the brook drying, you would not move. You would remain stagnant. Without the brook drying, you would cease to live and just exist. We don't, we don't just exist. We want to thrive. We want to live life. We just don't want to survive. But we want to live life in its fullest. And you would not grow if the brookers would not dry up. But when the brook dries up, God is going to usher in new relationships in my life. He's going, to usher in, uh, he's going to usher in new possibilities in my life. He's going to usher in new people in my life. Believe God for that. That in your journey of becoming, as you move from one season to another, as God signals the end of seasons, let God usher in seasons with new people, with new relationships. I want to declare right now, actually, for somebody who is listening to this. And you are saying that, Pastor, I'm believing God for, for marriage. I'm believing God for, for a relationship. You could have been let down by your previous boyfriend. Let me tell you that it was the end of a season, but God is ushering you into a new season. You are going to enter into seasons of the more than enough. You are going to become who God has called you to. Life will not be a limitation. The brook drying up is not going to be a limitation. Because when the brook dries up, God is going to bring you into new relationships. He is going to bring you into new networks. You could be saying that I have lost contracts, but I have lost a contract in my business. I have lost a contract in my, in my workplace. But let me tell you that God is going to usher you into new relationships, new networks. You are going to get calls from people that you have not expected to get calls pick them up and say this is the doing of the lord and it is marvelous in our eyes you will become who god has called you to since i'm encouraged today that when the brook dries up god will usher in new relationships but when the brook dries up my trust in god is going to be built my trust in god is going to be strengthened oh because i choose to trust in the lord of our armies i will choose to trust in the great god of israel the God of war, Jehovah Jireh. And when the brook dries up, it ushers in faith for the miraculous. It is not going to be a place where we are going to break down, but it is going to be a place where we will build faith for the miraculous. Children of God, I want to encourage you. We could be in a pandemic. Our nation, South Africa, could be going through challenges, but those are just brooks that are drying up. I believe that God is about to usher us into new horizons. I believe that God is about to usher us into new possibilities. He says, see, I'm about to do a new thing. New roads and new rivers. New roads and new rivers. Like we have declared that new roads are new horizons. New possibilities. New opportunities. I want to declare on CCJ, on you that is on the line right now, that new roads and new possibilities and new opportunities for you today. I declare rivers, new rivers, sources of supply. Let God bring through the sources of supply. Let God bring through new provisions and new resources. I declare it on you, child of God, in your journey of becoming who God has called you to become and live in the newness of what God is bringing you to. Your marriage will, will see new rivers. Your marriage will experience new horizons. Ha ha ha. Moke Shiba karaba soko New roads. New roads and new rivers. Because when the brook dries up, I will not die at this brook. But I will rise up. I will rise and go to that place that God has called me to. Let's go and become what God has called us to. Thank you for joining us today. This is Celebration Pulse, and we are signing off. <laughs>